What I have here for you today is a Raspberry Pi Model 3B Plus running at 1.4 GHz and 1 GB of RAM. And that is going to go up against IBM PL300 running at 0.35 GHz and 64 megs of RAM. Which one of these is going to be the better way to store your files on a network. So these old IBM cases are just built like tanks. Uh, but it's got this key lock on the back and that's the lock position. Pop the key out. Um, these are, well, let me show you just how secure these are. I am totally a novice lock pick. Uh, this is just cheap pick set of Banggood, and I barely know how to do this, but I'll show you. There. So that was more like raking than any kind of finesse technique. Uh, it, yeah. What else can I say about that? Anyways, um, don't trust that for security. Uh, but it is nice because it's a totally toolless entry. And when I popped this open before, this stick was loose in the slot. These two sticks were just bumming around over here somewhere. Uh, but we do have Pentium 2 350 in here. Uh, we've got... PCI and ISA slots on a riser up here. Uh, I really wanted ISA slots because after I'm done with this video, uh, I got some other plans for it for retro computing. Uh, it comes with a six gigabyte hard drive, which we'll be using in the test. And uh, CD-ROM, is this a burner? Can't remember, uh, it doesn't look like it. But I've got some burners just laying around that might work in here. And got a floppy drive. Nothing in there, uh, but generally a nice computer. Okay, first time booting this up. I've got it attached to an LCD monitor and appropriately got myself an IBM AT keyboard. Some people think this is the Model M, uh, but uh, no, it's actually before the Model M and it's actually louder. So um, let's start this up. Uh, I have not actually turned this on yet. Fan noise, good sign. And display's coming up, that's good. Nice IBM logo. 256 megs, interesting. They sold it to me as 64 megs. Um, I wonder if the RAM slots were already loose when they got it. And this one of them was in there enough they, they just saw 64 megs and they sold it as that and they didn't even pop the thing open. Huh? That's a good sound. Okay, yes, now we're here. So here's how this is set up. We got a Raspberry Pi uh, connected in to the USB hard drive uh, uh, transfer. Um, just a four terabyte drive we've got for backup purposes mostly, but we, we can use it for this. Uh, that's all connected into this 10100 switch. Now this is a Pi 3B plus. It does have gigabit ethernet, um, but uh, we're not gonna hit the limit on 100 megabits anyway. Um, remember 100 megabits is 12.8 megabytes. Uh, so that's the fastest speed we could theoretically achieve in this setup. The laptop is where I'm going to be testing from. That's got an SSD on it, so that's not going to be a bottleneck there. Uh, that's at 192.168.0.2 on this network. And then the uh, old Pentium 2 machine, that's at 192.168.0.4. Um, and that all plugged into this switch, and that's all just kind of its own network. So my prediction is that 
we are we're probably not going to reach the max theoretical speed on 100 megabit ethernet um but i think the pentium is going to win this is on a 66 well it should be a 66 megabyte um per second uh ata 66 uh for its hard drive uh and the pi on the other hand uh, is going through USB that has a theoretical speed of 60 megabytes per second um, but the Pi tends to be much lower than that uh, pretty much any setup for USB on any computer really you're probably not going to see that kind of speed uh, but the Pi in particular has a very limited USB uh, output um, so I think the Pentium 2 is going to win well let's see all right, we are SSH'd into the laptop uh, over the wireless connector connection. So the wired connections are all on that switch. And when we do the test on the old server, we have to use plain text passwords. It's using an old version of Samba. Uh, so we have to use this configuration to actually get that to happen. Otherwise, SMB client will reject it because it doesn't like plain text passwords for good reason. All right, we're logged into the Pi here, and we're going to upload this file to start with, and then we're going to get it back. So this is a write test out to the Pi. All right, so we actually got pretty close to the limit here uh, of uh, 10.1, uh, well, uh, almost 11 megabit, megabytes, I should say. Uh, per second. Uh, so that's not bad. Let's uh, get it back. All right, so again, pretty close to the limit. Uh, now let's try this on the old machine. So we'll put Terraria server. All right, so that's a little bit slower, not as much as you might think, uh, just about nine megabits. Now let's get it back. All right, oh, that's uh, much slower than I would have thought. Uh, so uh, 5.6 megabytes per second in that uh, area. So what are we seeing here? Uh, my prediction ended up being wrong. Uh, I thought the USB on the Pi was going to be very limiting on this. Um, I still think that this is not, uh, using a Pi is not gonna be the best way to use an NES, but I'm actually, now that I see these numbers, I'm actually more okay with it than I was uh, before. Um, you have to limit uh, your expectations. Um, so if you want to do a, if you just want streaming music, it'll work fine. If you want to do probably, you could probably do 1080p video over this and it'd be okay. 4k video, uh, that, I, I don't think I'd want to try that, um, with, for an NAS running off a Raspberry Pi. Um, the thing is, this is not a CPU-bound application. Um, the, the CPUs are not going to work very hard. Now, if you're in a big office where a lot of people are using the same file server, that's when you're going to hit limitations on CPU and you want something more modern. For just yourself at home and your family, uh, you're not going to hit that. We're looking at... I.O. being a bottleneck. Um, the USB connection on the Pi and the IDE channel on the old machine. Um, now the Pi, uh, when it's going over that USB, it's the Ethernet device is also on the USB channel. So it's reading from the hard drive and then writing back out over the Ethernet, and that Ethernet is also going over USB. So you're sh so the 60 megabytes per second that's theoretically possible on USB 2, which the Pi isn't going to do. That's you're using up something twice that's already very limited. On um, 
the old Pentium 3, or Pentium 2 rather, it's, it's all separated out. It's an ID hard drive uh, on one channel, and then it's going out over the Ethernet that's going to be on PCI. Um, yeah, even though it's not a PCI slot, it's all integrated in that motherboard. It's almost certainly still on the PCI bus. It's just hardwired. And PCI bus can do 512 megabytes per second. Um, so it's not hitting a limit there. Um, it's, so you're much less bottlenecked. Uh, now it is slower, and I think th that's probably due to an the old hard drive uh, more than uh, any kind of interfacing bottleneck anywhere else in the machine. Um, and of course on the Pi 3B Plus you can use Gigabit Ethernet. Um, I don't think you're going to hit the limit of what the Pi can actually do on that. Um, uh, that can't actually do uh, a full gigabit speed. It's about half that uh, because the Pi, again, is very limited on bandwidth over that USB port. Uh, or the USB bus, I should probably say. Um, anyways, I was a little bit surprised by this result. Um, I would say if you want an NAS and you want to do something more serious with it, you don't necessarily need a new machine. Um, your grandma has an old Core 2 Duo she wants to throw out. Um, great, take it. Um, clean out your grandma's cat hair uh, that she shed into there. Uh, then uh, just slap a new hard drive in it and you have got yourself an NAS. And it'll almost certainly do better than a Pi. Um, if your goal is just to learn how to set this up on a Raspberry Pi, that's okay, go do that. Um, if your goal is you want a good performing NAS, that's probably going to do a lot better for you than a Raspberry Pi. Um, you probably don't want to go so old as what I have in this test. Uh, but I think this does demonstrate uh, where the bottlenecks are in the system. So thanks for watching. So if you enjoy this video, please subscribe to this channel. It really helps me out. And if you really like it, maybe you check out my book, on LeanPub, uh, programming the Raspberry Pi with Perl goes into a lot of projects and everything you need to know about how to do that. So thanks for watching.